What are the foods that can heal you and what are the foods that can harm? You know, in this video, we're going to jump into the traditional Chinese medicine diet because you might be surprised as you go through this video. Lots of foods that you think you should be consuming, like the medical medium's celery juice cleanse, are actually not considered healthy for a lot of the people that are watching this video. In this video, we'll jump in more with lots of the specifics and we'll share what foods are good for which person and which foods are not good for which person. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. So let's jump in right here. So let's talk about celery juice, for example, because this is a perfect jumping off point. I had a patient once come in years ago in the student clinic, and she was this very, very thin, pale, anemic, weak looking woman, had very, very poor digestion. She was complaining about getting a food baby with every meal, even diarrhea and looser bowel movements, lots of bloating, lots of food allergies. She felt cold often and was complaining of hypothyroid-like symptoms. You know, loose and thin and falling hair, brittle hair, lots of fatigue, etc. And as we were discussing more and more and more in the student clinic, she was saying, you know, I'm really loving this celery juice cleanse, this diet from the medical medium, and I'm really trying to figure out why I'm not feeling that well though. Now, this is a great moment as a teaching student, right? Because for me, this is a great example of what Eastern versus Western dietetics looks like. This woman had a pattern of what we call spleen dampness and interior cold, stomach cold. What these mean in modern scientific terms or layman terms, dampness is often the gut microbiome destruction that you see in excessive bloating, food allergies, and loose stools. And stomach cold is often when people have not enough stomach acid, and low pancreatic enzyme production. So anything they eat, they feel like it's food sitting in their stomach, they're getting bloated or full easily, or they get loose stools. Now the problem with the celery juice, while plants are healthy in general, raw vegetables, especially raw celery, is considered one of the coldest things you could consume from a Chinese medicine point of view. Cold meaning on a, what they call a qi level, like the temperature of food. Temperature meaning like the spice of ginger, or the nice cooling sensation of an iced lemonade in summer. So celery is a lot more on the lines of like watermelon juice. You would only want to drink that on a hot summer day. You would not want to be drinking that in a cold Midwestern summer. But this woman had been convinced she should be drinking 30, 40, 50 ounces of this daily. So in Chinese medicine, this would be extremely contraindicated. She should be having foods that are like meat or like oatmeal for breakfast with warming spices, lots of cinnamon, some honey in there, maybe a little bit of fruit. But she was doing the exact opposite and having ice cold smoothies with ice cubes, protein powder that was whey based, and then also celery juice. There's lots of this messaging East versus West, like green tea, green tea is so good for you, right? Green tea is bitter and cold. So if you're someone who easily gets indigested, you don't have a good appetite, you are cold, and you're someone who has lots of food allergies, green tea is not the thing to drink 10 times a day. You're better off with like a puar tea, like more of like a warming black tea or ginger cardamom, like a more Indian chai tea. Now, great lesson for dietetics from the Chinese medicine point of view, but what are the macro level principles of dietetics according to traditional Chinese medicine? Because in the West, we're used to like the food pyramid, right? If you go to like a dietitian. But what is the Eastern equivalent of that? That's what we're gonna talk about now. And again, don't forget you guys, I've put together this really great root cause quiz. It's the first link below the video. This is something that's going to help you a lot figure out what your digestive symptoms are, what organ network they're coming from. You can even score yourself on how many of the symptoms you have of each organ network problem, whether it's stomach, pancreas, gallbladder, large intestine, a microbiome issue, right, small intestine, it's the first link below this video, it pairs really well with this. So let's jump in a little more and download that. So principle number one is the balance of yin and yang. Now, lest you think this is some kind of esoteric concept, it is actually a very clinical concept. So when we talk about the balance of yin and yang, we're often talking about foods being classified according to their yin cooling nature or yang warming nature. So for example, a balanced diet would ultimately involve both in your meals. Right? But someone, for example, with excess stomach heat is often acid reflux, red face, they feel warm, often have acne, sometimes also have headaches, bad breath, prone to sore throats. All of this is excess heat. So you'd be better off having a more cooling diet, more vegetables that are sauteed, more of that green tea, less coffee, less alcohol, less smoking, less fried food, less meats. Those kinds of things would benefit that person a lot. And the opposite is true. If you have, you know, for example, stomach cold, this is the kind of person who shouldn't be eating raw vegetables. They should stay away from a raw vegan diet. They should do more meats, more cooked vegetables, 
more warming stews and spices. Now the second theory is the five element theory. So five element theory basically connects certain foods and flavors like sweet, sour, salty, bitter, etc., to certain organs and organ functions. So for example, wood, fire, earth, metal, water organs and their corresponding flavors. But each element and organ has a specific taste, color, and food associated with them. For example, sour foods are linked to the liver, which is the wood element or wood phase, while bitter foods are associated often with the heart and the fire. Now, a clinical example is, we say bitter reduces the earth organs. So earth is like your stomach, spleen, pancreas. So when you've overeaten, the way you reduce this excess food indigestion is by having bitters. There's a reason why there's digestive bitters. There are alcoholic drinks that are bitters, like a Negroni, right? All of these are traditional indigenous wisdom for how to improve your digestive function. The third principle is the energetic qualities of food or the temperature. So in traditional Chinese medicine, we consider not just the nutritional content of food, but also the temperature, like hot, warm, neutral, cool, or cold, as well as the flavor, sweet, sour, bitter, salty, pungent. These are the two qualities that we also use in terms of the herbal medicine. For example, Lots of those warming, stimulating spices, ginger, cardamom, clove, cinnamon twigs, cinnamon bark are stimulating and improve metabolism. And they will often, for example, stimulate appetite. But if you have a great appetite, that may not be a good thing. For these foods, they influence basically what we call the body's chi and can support or disrupt that balance. So if you have tons of acid reflux and burning and the acne, red face, you're warm, stay away from pungent warming spices. You'd be better off on a vegetarian based diet for at least a certain period of time. And the final principle is seasonal eating. So our most ancient medical texts, or I should say one of the most important ancient texts, the Yellow Emperor's inner classic, the Huangdi Neijing, says the cultivated person, the person who lives a long life, adjusts their lifestyle and even their eating to the qi or the quality of each season. So in summer, you probably shouldn't be eating ginger every single day and eating a very highly warming diet, even though I know in a lot of tropical climates where it's hot and humid, they do eat lots of pungent spices to cool down. But winter is the season for these hearty soups, bone broth, chicken soup, hot tea in the morning, right? Hot cocoa. In the summer, it's why people like drinking cucumber, mint, lemon tea, right? These foods have a naturally cooling quality to them. And that quality is what ancient doctors called the qi, right? Related to like the temperature of it. So adjusting your eating seasonally, and I would say even for seasons of your own life, right? If you're in a high stress phase of life and you notice that you get lots of indigestion, maybe just eat a little bit lighter and adopt a little bit more of a cooling diet if you're getting some acid reflux flaring up. Or maybe if you're a professional who needs five cups of coffee during that tough accounting season and you're not gonna take my advice to not drink five cups of coffee, have a more simple temperature cooling diet so you're not getting much GI upset. Do more vegetarian meals, do more cooked vegetables, stay away from heavy fried greasy foods. So what does the actual research say on this though? You know, for example, there's this idea that like bitter foods can improve your digestion, right? But is there actual any evidence for that? When the Chinese medicine medical classics say, eat bitter to reduce the earth organs or eat sour to tonify the liver, like what does this stuff mean clinically? So let's talk about the flavor of bitter. It is one of the least enjoyable flavors most of us like to eat, dandelion greens, bitter melon, a certain kind of greens, even like shard can be a little bitter sometimes, but I should say, these bitters, for example, have a number of clinically proven benefits. So for example, check out this research paper in the Journal of Phytomedicine. It talks about biliary elimination of lipids and bile acids induced by an artichoke leaf extract. So artichoke leaf extract falls into that bitter herb category. What they found was that bitter compounds stimulate the taste receptors that trigger the digestive system to increase bile production. It helps in breaking down fats and aids in the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. And that regular expulsion of bile from the gallbladder can actually prevent the formation of gallstones by avoiding the buildup of bile. And it is for this exact same reason that bitter foods can help the liver in its detoxification process. So these bitters can also help in the production of certain gastric and digestive juices, which can help with bloating, constipation, and gas. So that's a rough overview on TCM dietetics. We also have a couple other videos on the channel here on TCM dietetics and how you can apply it clinically in your day-to-day -day life. But there's also this quiz we've put together that is a very useful resource that will help you figure that out. Again, guys, don't forget, I work with a limited number of new patients every month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. So if you're interested, go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic or check out the information to call us or email us in the link in the bio right below here, there's information. And we also have another related video on TCM Dietetics right up here.